Hi guys, today we're going to talk about probability, and specifically the probability of independent and dependent events. And the short answer, the short thing to think about is when you're doing probability, when you have independent events, you multiply the probabilities of the events to get the answer. And when you have dependent events, you have to be more careful. Uh, and I love probability because it shows up in poker or any sort of card game or sports or a lot of, you know, survey analysis. It, it shows up everywhere in life. Uh, so let's get into it. You flip a coin twice. What's the probability of getting heads than tails? Okay. So the first time it's a half. The first, the, that's the probability of first flipping a heads. And then the second time the probability of flipping tails is also a half. And because the two coin flips are independent of each other, you just take this a half times a half and you get a fourth and that's just 25%, right? Um, just so you know, the other way of thinking about this is if I, if I just write out all the flips, heads, 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 tails, these are, this is like flipping it twice. These are all the possibilities. Tails, heads, tails, tails. Well, half the time I get heads first and then half that time, I, well, half the time I get heads on the first flip, and then half this time I get tails on the second flip, right? So it's a half of a half, or 25%. Okay, uh, this is going to be the same thing. Uh, we're going to flip tails the first time, we're going to flip tails the second time, and when we multiply these we'll get one half times one half, or one fourth, which is 25%. Here we've got a spinner. So here we're asking, what's the probability we first spin on the odd and then we spin, sorry, we first spin even, then we spin odd. So the even is two out of four. The odd is two options out of four. So each of these is one half. Each of these is one half. So you might say, okay, that's like, you know, a lot of, work to just say one half times one half is one fourth, but you never know. Even an odd won't always be 50-50, right? Maybe there'll be more even numbers than odd numbers. It just so happened that there were the same number of even and odd numbers on this spinner. So that's going to be a fourth. So here's an example, right? What's the probability of getting blue and then blue? Well, there are three blues, so that's going to be three out of the total number, which is five. And then again, there are three blues out of five the second time. So when we multiply them, we'll get nine over 25. So that's going to give us nine out of 25. Okay. Without putting the first card back, so these are not independent events, but we'll get into that, right? So without... You pick a card at random. Without putting the first card back, you pick a second card at random. What's the probability of red, then purple? Okay, so I first pick a red. So how many options are there for red? Well, there are two out of six. But if I don't put the first card back, now I kind of pretend, let's just say I picked that one, it doesn't really matter. Let's just say that's no longer a choice for us because we picked that red. There is now one purple out of the remaining five, right? So the probability of that is going to be one out of five. So we should end up with two. So this is one this is one third. So when we multiply these two together, we'll get one third times one fifth, which equals one fifteenth. So the extra complication here is once we once we picked the red, we have to cross it out because it's no longer involved when we pick the second card, right? So so now we have one fifteenth as our answer. We'll be on the lookout for that kind of thing. So you flip a coin tw twice, you you want to know the probability of getting tails and then heads. So the first time the probability of getting tails is one out of two. 
The second time, the probability of getting heads is one out of two. The flips have nothing to do with each other. They're completely independent. You multiply them together, you get one-fourth. But we know one-fourth is 25%. Oh, two of my favorite things, a cube and probability. What could get better than this? So you roll a six-sided die twice. What is the probability of getting less than three and then six? So less than three, right, that's one or two. How many options is that? That's two options out of how many options? Six options, because it's a six-sided die. So the first time you have a one out of three chance of meeting that criteria. The second time you have to roll a six, right? So what's the probability you have to roll a six? Well, that's one out of six. There's one six out of six numbers. So when you multiply these things together, you get one over 18. So the answer is one out of 18. You pick a card at random, put it back, and then pick another card at random. Ah, see the difference here? You put it back. So it's gonna be different from that first card one we did. Uh, so what's the probability that it's odd, that you pick an odd number and then you pick an even number? So the first time, there are how many odds? Three, five, seven. Three odds out of six or one half. And then even, we don't have to do that cross out thing because we're putting all the cards back, right? So now we can just say there are also three even cards out of six. So that's one half. And when we multiply one half by one half, we get one fourth, which is our answer. So what's the probability of flipping an odd card and then flipping an even card, one half. Sorry, one half times one half or one fourth. That would change if we didn't put the first card back, which is something interesting to think about. Okay, so let's go ahead and write one fourth. You pick a card at random without putting the first card back, you pick a second card at random. What is the probability of getting less than eight and then exactly nine. So on the first try, you want to get less than eight. So that's two out of four, or one half. That's on the first try. You, for you to be successful, you have to pick six or seven, which is a half probability. Now, you don't put the first card back, so that means that you now cross out, let's just say you pick the six, it's not gonna change the math, right? So you just eliminate one of these. And now you wanna pick the second card at random and you wanna make sure that it's a nine, right? Well, for it to be a nine, there's one nine out of three remaining, right? So that's one out of three. So now we multiply one half times one third, and we get, that three didn't look so good, one sixth, one forward slash six. All right, you pick a marble at random without putting the first marble back, you pick a second marble at random. What is the probability of getting blue and then brown? So we did not put it back. So this is called without replacement in jargon. Right, oh, it's hard to see the colors. Okay, um, so you first pick blue, right? So that's gonna be one out of five. And then without putting it back, so now there's no more blue, you wanna pick a brown. Now, it looks to me that there are no brown. I'll, I'll, I'll redo it after I get rid of the scratch pad, but it looks to me like there are no brown, but 
we count the number of brown over four, right? And as soon as there are no brown, we know that the whole answer is zero. There's no chance this will happen, that we pick a blue and then a brown. Every, anyone knows that, even if you don't know math, right? So I, do, I don't see any brown, so I think the answer is just going to be zero. Okay, all, I hope you had a good time. I, I'm not lying when I say I absolutely love probability theory. Look for it all around you, um, and you will see that lots of things in life are governed by chance. Maybe even how your parents met, so ask them about that.